Hey Smokestack fans, Johnny C from New Jersey. Welcome to Johnny C's generator room. I think the last time I posted a video on the progress of my generator room, uh, the floor wasn't painted and the walls probably didn't even exist. Anyway, today we're going to run a test by running one of my, uh, I'm going to say apartments uh, in my house on full generator power for an extended period of time. Uh, very quickly, in case if you missed any of the information on the Smokestack forum, we're going to be monitoring the voltage using a Sense Labs uh, device here. Basically, it uh, broadcasts all the data, usage, and whatever over the internet. Uh, you may say, well, maybe you won't have internet during a power outage. That may be true, but once uh, the generator comes up on power, the house will have uh, internet access. A lot of times when we have power failure, the, the, usually the internet is available. Uh, this is going to be partially ran under control of the uh, automatic transfer switch. What do we have here? This is uh, an Onan OT70. It's a 70 amp switch. Uh, now, keep in mind now, this is actually a portable setup. Everything moves. It's on wheels, even the fuel, okay, as you can see, hopefully. Uh, everything is plug and play. All right, I got to keep this in that format. Okay, uh, as far as the lines go into the house, being again, once again, it's portable, a portable setup. I have, let's see if I can zoom in. Okay, all right, I have two uh, receptacles, I guess you could say, on the house side. Okay, for the RV cord. Sorry about the wiggling of the uh, video. I'm actually zooming in. It's about 50 feet from the house to the generator uh, room. I still got to hook up my cords. Okay. Uh, anyway, how's this all going to work? Basically, uh, if we have a power outage, which we're going to simulate, uh, in the basement, uh, I have interlock devices on two of my services. So when we do have a power outage, okay, we're going to lose power, no question about it. Uh, the generator will start up automatically. Oh, how is it going to happen? Okay. Well, here's one one of the things. You see this cord right here? This goes up into the ATS, okay. This is actually the grid power. And again, I apologize for the uh, shakiness of the video. That's grid power. And that's actually connected to a 50 amp uh, MIG welder outlet that runs uh, to the house, okay, underground. So once I lose power from the house, well, the, jet, the uh, ATS is gonna sense no power. And if all is working well, it's going to go through a sequence and start up the generator. And once that happens, uh, the only thing I have to do is go into the basement and flip the interlocks. But if I do that, at least on one of the services, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> uh, I have to also disable the uh, power coming into the garage here. All right. Otherwise, the generator is going to produce voltage. Voltage is going to come back into the garage. The ATS is going to sense it and it's gonna think hey power failure over with and then what it's gonna do is shut down the generator once the generator shuts down I have no power coming to the garage and then it's gonna be a vicious cycle uh, you know start stop start stop but that's no big deal okay uh, let's put it this way if it's raining outside uh, two o'clock in the morning three o'clock in the morning or snowing you got a foot of snow out there and we lose power I don't have to come out to the uh, generator shed out here and uh, manually hook things up. All I have to do is go down to the basement, flip the interlocks on my uh, on my breaker boxes, and if I want power to the full house, okay, I uh, just have to flip the uh, breaker coming out to this garage. All right. So anyway, so that's pretty much it. So you can say that this is semi-automatic. All right. It's still, I guess, classified as a portable setup. Hey. Everything's on wheels. Everything is plug and play. Uh, again, we got the power cords going out to the house. By the way, these power cords are 50 amp power cords. Uh, for those that may have not seen my other videos, these are RV cables, okay? Uh, they use these uh, on the big RVs when they plug into landline power or even generators. They're meant for outdoor use, so they're dirty as hell. So there's no uh, problem having them outdoors because that's what they're made for. All right, so I have to hook all this up. Okay, it's early in the morning and I just had breakfast. So, you know, I'm not quite fully awake yet. But anyway, so that's our setup. Okay, hopefully uh, it answers some questions because people on the stack were saying, hey, this is really not the way that 
uh, transfer switch should be hooked up. It should really be hooked up on the breaker box side inside the house. That is true. But if I did that, then I'm going to have to modify some house wiring. And uh, again, this is only a 70 amp box, okay? So you can say this is a little unconventional, but it works, okay? And it's going to work well for my purposes. Maybe next year, uh, being right now it's already September, I'll trench between the generator room and the house and bury some lines and make it all permanent. But for now, it's a portable setup. This is like a last minute thing over the past month or two. So anyway, I just wanted to give you an overview of what I got here. Uh, I'm going to start setting up in the house and uh, I'm going to run uh, one of my apartments. Okay, this is a multifamily house over here. Uh, I'm going to run one of them, the bottom floor, on full generator power for several hours. Uh, to see exactly what's happening here. I don't have to be around this machine or this generator. Once again, with the Sense module, it's going to broadcast all that data up to the uh, cloud over the internet. It's going to store it. I could uh, look at it later on in graph format. I can see usage. It's very accurate from previous tests. Great thing. Otherwise, I'd have to look at the meter panel all morning. Another reason why I want to run this thing, I got fuel here uh diesel fuel in a 16 this is 16 gallon barrel by the way might appear to be like a 55 gallon barrel but it's a 16 gallon barrel the fuel that's in it is about oh two a year old okay so i want to use this okay because i'm actually a little less than half a tank so i want to use this fuel get rid of it so i can put new fuel in it and uh have everything up to par ready for winter time all right so that's about it i'll get back to you in a moment hang in there now, oh, before I start up the, uh, the generator, let me just show you a couple other things for those that probably haven't seen the previous videos or following the thread on the smokestack of uh, what this generator room is all about. Uh, basically, it's a 12 by 8 room, okay? This was once a screened-in patio built back in the uh, 50s, okay, on a garage that's probably built back in the 20s. What we've done, we uh, pretty much... Uh, finish it off into like a regular uh, building room whatever as you can see we got our exhaust over here for the uh, diesel uh, through a thimble everything uh, is protected as far as for heat and uh, that's really about it we do have a backup generator to this uh, diesel over here is the 7.5 JB uh, thing runs great but uh, it's just here sitting here not hooked up or anything like that uh, that's about it. Uh, we are hooked up out here in the generator room. One of the things I still have to do, by the way, okay, as you see, I got a cable running out to the house over here. It goes through the door. Uh, the only other way I could actually route this in is through the uh, main part of the garage. And one other thing, uh, on the smokestack forum, people are saying, well, how do you keep this room cool and all that? And I keep telling everybody, well, I got a back door right here. Yeah, I got a very wide door over here. This is uh, close to 48 or 40 inches. I think it's actually about 36. And I got a uh, big garage door over here for a single car. So uh, if the worst came, come, came to worst, I could always open up these two doors. I get a nice cross breeze, but I shouldn't have to do that. I guess if uh, we have a really bad storm, whatever, I also have this window up here. Okay, uh, it opens and uh, that would... Uh, allow heat to go out if need be or draw in cool air if that was the case okay in previous tests uh i did have cool air on the on the ground level and it was acceptable up above okay it wasn't terribly hot now if it's 100 degrees outside i'm not going to get this down to 80 degrees okay it's always going to be a little uh, warmer so uh that's about it so let me uh get into the house and get things all set up everything is ready over here the ats is uh Presently connected to the grid power and it's available. Okay, so uh, Everything is pretty much normal and by the way when the lights go out. Okay from a lack of grid power We do have some emergency lights if you want to call it that these things right here are neon uh, They activate when uh, there's no power. Well, let me just pull it out like that. These things are actually good They're small, but they do the job. I got one there I got one up there, I also got a CO detector, okay, as you can see up here on the ceiling, works great. I used that in previous videos when uh, we were testing uh, carbon monoxide poisoning. Uh, try to make this room as safe as possible. Yeah, of course we got our fire extinguishers. Again, this is not a commercial building, so don't expect, uh, you know, fire suppression systems and 
whatnot. You know, this is a simple little generator room, uh, backyard. Uh, really not professional, I guess you could say, in the sense of how it would actually be done in a commercial environment. But again, this is backyard stuff. Okay, so anyway, let's uh, get ready and uh, create a power failure. Hang in there. Okay, folks, we're going to create a uh, power failure. Obviously, this thing is not running right now. Once again, as you can see, the ATS lights indicate normal available, which means normal grid power. Uh, the power is available to the house. Okay, so let's bring up half the house on generator power. I'm going to run into the basement. Okay, I'm going to keep the video going. I'm going to run into the basement, flip what I need to flip to create the power failure, and also uh, to hit the interlocks. I'm going to run back out here, being that this is a diesel, it has glow plugs. This ATS right here has a circuit in it that will energize the glow plugs for, I think I got to set for like 30 seconds, summertime. Then we'll start the generator. So let's let's do this. Okay, here we go. As you can see, we got lights on. All right, uh, here we go. All right. So once again, half the house will go up on generator power. All right, so let's go. All right. Only one of these will be energized over here basement open which will be running back out again one of the things we'll we also modified here we'll put in a new uh, gas heater to get rid of two electric water heaters there's our two services right here this is for the first floor we're gonna be uh, uh, using this interlock right here uh, is that right let's see here yeah that's it okay oh yeah 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 so this is for the garage okay so here we go by the way, I'm probably going to be in the dark when I flip the uh, breaker off. Okay, let's simulate a power failure. First floor. Boom. Okay. So, okay, so let's see. Here we are. Here's our emergency light on. Let me do this right here. I need this light because I can't see. All right. We do have power to this box right here, all right, which is going out to the garage. So if I do this, okay, I'm going to run out right now. We have no power to the garage. I can hear the... Uh, little warning alert for the uh, generator once again uh, let's run back out here watch this thing start up we got 30 seconds to do this emergency lights on on as you can see the uh, grid powers out and of course the generator powers out once here we go Okay, the smoke cleared up. Again, it's a diesel. I don't know if you heard me or not. So that's normal. First few seconds. Uh, right now we do have power going into the house, but I did not flip the interlock. Once again, uh, just this one is running for the first floor. Uh, in a real power failure situation, I would not have to run outside. I'm just doing this to show you how this thing is running, how it's well working. So once again, you know, until when I flip the interlock for the first floor, a second floor, first floor apartment. Let's see if I could do this. I'm gonna have to put down a light because I only got two hands. So if I do this and I do that, now we're on generator power. Okay, so once again, this is the interlock. This is our dedicated generator breaker. Let's see if we could uh, get this in clear or not. Now I'm gonna leave everything on, stove and all, because in past tests I did run a stove. The stove by itself did draw a lot, but it's still okay for uh, the generator. I'm just going to let this run all morning. All right, let me put back in my emergency light. It should go off because now we got power. All right, so the first floor apartment and the basement run off of the same breaker box. Okay, so 
you know, I know I'm running all over the place, but once again, in a real life grid power outage, if the power went out, all I would have to do is just come down here, flip the main breaker off, interlock up, generator breaker on. That would take care of the first floor. All right, I do have time, but I would have to also uh, turn off the uh, dedicated breaker for the garage. And uh, if I want the second floor to go up on power, I would also have to uh, flip the uh, interlock as well. That's it. Nothing. Okay, it'll automatically start up, uh, warm up, transfer power. Then we would have uh, the whole house up on power. So, but once again, we're only, got, we're only doing half the house. I'm going to leave it run all day. Uh, excuse me, all morning because I got to get rid of... Uh, I don't know about eight gallons of diesel fuel, so that'll take about eight hours right there. But I don't plan on running eight hours, so that's about it. So let me close this up. So we're half on grid, the other half on generator, and uh, that's about it. I'll be checking in. Oh, we got to enter the humidifier. I want to run everything as normal just to see how much we're drawing. Now I'm going to go back out and I'm going to look at the meters and uh, see what we're drawing. But uh, I'm just going to leave it alone. I could get all that data later on using the sense monitor. It records all the usage uh, up to the internet, stores it, then uh, I could use the data later on. All right, so we'll check back in a little later. Take care, bye.